Welcome to Help Desk with Joe. This is show 91. We are here in Spencer, West Virginia at the Patch Turned Up studio. And with me as always, Justin and Joe. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Show 91. We're coming up on that uh, century mark. I know. How cool is that? Getting real close. Getting real close. Yeah, I know. We'll be there in eight weeks. But uh, we're going to have to get the little celebration poppers and some <laughs> birthday hats make a couple of signs and one of those jupiter jump up pony there rides you go. The whole nine yards. you betcha <laughs> we'll roll it out but uh yeah pretty cool deal show 91 here help desk with joe always helping out the community and stuff and i'm excited about today i don't think justin's super excited about it but because we got two apple stories and you know how he loves his apple stuff you read my mind i looked at <laughs> these topics i'm like oh god <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's going to be a good I'm day, afraid, Joe. Because Joe, Joe gives us the topics, but he doesn't elaborate. He usually doesn't hint too much at Well, the, anything with Apple yeah. is usually a bad thing because they're so far behind, yeah. you know. It's a I just problem. I love it when you pay extra money to be two years behind. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's one of those deals that just, you know, makes me feel good inside. And it's, it's for your convenience. Oh, as a Samsung <laughs> user, I'm always giggling. That's what I told somebody the other day. I was like, hey, just send me a time text to remind me about this tomorrow. And they looked at me and was like, oh, never mind. Yep. <laughs> Apple user, you're like, what? How'd you know? Like, cause you don't, you're, you know. In yeah. two years, you'll figure out what a time text is. But yeah, you little blue dot people think you're so superior. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. you're paying to get into the cool club, though. <laughs> this is true. I wish I could spend that time text. It's so many times I'm like, well, I don't want to bother him. It's like real late, but I don't want to forget to like. Yeah, yeah. This thing I'm with you. That's a. I sent somebody a text, and they're like, "Were you up at five yeah. in the morning?" It's like, no, I wasn't up. <laughs> and they looked at it like you're an Apple user, aren't you? Like, how'd you know? Like, never mind. It's just a gut feeling. Yeah. <laughs> I have intuition. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So, Help Desk with Joe, show 91. Reeling these right off, even in these uh, weird times of COVID where it's hard and you got to wear masks and all that jazz. Joe, you've kept this show going, teaching us how to do things remote and so forth. So, kudos for that. We're uh, rolling right along here with Help Desk with Joe. Yeah, I was going through my... Uh, Every day, Facebook sends a little notification. Here's your memories from yeah. this day, some of years. And it was literally two years ago this week that we started talking about COVID. It hadn't hit the shores yet. Really? Yeah. So this is because I remember that <coughs> conversation just like it was yesterday because I was sitting there. Yeah. And we had Kale in here with us. Yeah. Uh, our student that runs the, ran the studio. <coughs> and you're like, listen, if you're getting a new iPhone, be prepared. It's going to take two or three weeks to get your phone because... People are getting the flu-like thing over in China, and it's shutting down the factories, and it's really hard to get stuff. And I was like, ah, oh, is that really a big deal? I mean, do you really have to worry about waiting two or three weeks right. to get your phone? And, and you were like, yeah, yeah, people want their phone as soon as they walk in the store, and it's an inconvenient. I was like, ah, pfft. now look at it. Yeah. What a magic roll of the dice for your eight ball, Joe, yeah. to call that one, because you're like, no, this is a serious thing. and. Uh, it's kind of funny. We should go back and listen to that. Yeah, well, I was, I stumbled <coughs> upon one of our podcasts. It's been several months ago, and I just went back to listen to it. And it was right when yeah. everything started shutting down. Right. And I was given the prophecy of things is going to be bad. It's, yeah. You're like, I, this is going to affect the whole technology world because first it's phones, <laughs> and then it's the parts of the phones. Yeah, you're right. And and I la sit back and laugh now, going, you ignorant fool. You had no idea what you was talking about. It's like, uh, like I, had I don't know. I think you had a really good well, idea. I had an inkling, but like to see it all roll out is yeah. like, I never imagined that it would have gotten as bad as hit that it level. Did. Yeah. Well, Joe, it, it hit that level, all right. Hit the level or hit the fan, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> it hit the fan. It hit it hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm really proud of our community here. We have a nice small community here in Roan County. Everybody just helps out and does what's needed. You know, it's really nice to see. So coming around, coming around. Oh, yeah. And uh, can almost see the light into the tunnel, or at least I think that every once in a while. And then yeah. I'm slapped in the face with something new. So. I'm gonna say I'm just hoping that there's not a train behind that light. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, get us started off. We got two stories with Apple here, so we're gonna say Apple number one. Yes. So. Justin, prepare yep. yourself. I'm ready. Apple number <laughs> one is Apple's tap to pay service <coughs> will soon let you pay make store purchases by tapping another iPhone. Wow. What? So Hold on, time out. Okay. You're going to walk in a store and say, hey, bub, let me see your iPhone. Blimp, just paid for something. Good luck and see you later. Yep. Who Whose phone would you use to do that? Yeah, I've done that before. What? 
It's kind of rare. Like the store clerk is going to have an Apple phone you paid to? Well, they have a kiosk. That, well, what yeah, they call well, I've it seen Apple street. Pay and you do yeah. them with kiosk. Yeah, yeah I have some. Yeah. Sam, I had Samsung Pay way before Apple Pay, but okay. Well, if we both had iPhones and I would use 10 bucks, I could, we could touch phones together and then you'd have 10 bucks. Dude, that's right? so weird. <laughs> Why can't you just like PayPal or Venmo? Yeah. Or, Why do we have to? Because it's easier yeah. to, to bump phones. <laughs> I don't think it is. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. I mean, um, I know Justin <laughs> takes his phone in the bathroom <laughs> and then sticks it on his face, and then you want me to touch my phone to his phone? <laughs> Time out. We just talked about the whole COVID thing, yeah. and I'm not sharing phone germs. Yeah, this no, thank you. Sense. Justin, just Vimo it to me, okay, yeah. buddy? This is a weird one. So, Who's my t- we got to dive deeper into this, Joe. Why? Yeah. Explain this Why? situation to us, Joe. <laughs> you have some explaining to do, young man. <laughs> so, okay, so. We, How about, hold on. <laughs> who, who sat in the meeting and said, hey, Justin, you know what we should do? Let's make it to where you can touch phones. <laughs> Let me see your phone. Let's touch them. See how. It, and then, wasn't there anybody there that said, listen. In times of COVID and the flu and strep throat, the last thing we need to do is share something that's right on your face that you yeah. cough on, you talk on, you sneeze on. Take to the bathroom on. And take to the bathroom, <laughs> and now we're going to touch them so you can share it with someone else? Yeah. What kind of person says, green light, brilliant. baby. <laughs> Bloody brilliant. <laughs> It was you, wasn't it, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, send your ideas. Just as like, my apple's on its last legs, but I got one more thing to throw at you. <laughs> 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 All right, sorry, Joe, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so as we discussed, uh, we've seen terminals at registers that'll let you do tap your credit card or debit card or use your phone with apps like Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay, things like that. Sure, that makes sense. To me. And so now Apple is going to allow merchants to pay by tapping your iPhone <coughs> to another iPhone. So yesterday, Apple announced a new tap to pay feature coming soon to iPhones where merchants can accept payments. Essentially, the iPhone becomes a contactless payment terminal. Stores using tap to pay will have an app on their iPhone. When a customer checks out, they can either hold their iPhone, Apple Watch, or a supported debit or credit card to the merchant's iPhone to pay. Tap to pay will roll out to Apple stores in the U.S. later this year. The company said the service will work uh, well. All the top network payment networks, including Visa, Mastercard, Discover, and and, Mas- and American Express. And Jennifer Bailey, Apple's vice president of Apple Pay and Apple Wallet, said in a statement: "As more and more consumers are tapping to pay with digital wallets and credit cards, tap to pay on iPhone will provide businesses with a secure, private, and easy way to accept contactless payments." And unlock new checkout experiences using the power, security, and convenience of iPhone. Unquote. So, contactless where it touches. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just the only place I see this having any pertinence at all is with like a a, a small business, l- l- like your business. Yes. Joe. You know, small business. You go in, somebody buys a computer part off of you and you install it in whatever and then they're like hey how do i pay and you'd be like oh cool here you know yeah touch your germy phone to my phone yeah <laughs> and but but you couldn't do it at like it doesn't have any impact on major businesses or bigger businesses that have a cash register and stuff right so this is literally just for the small merchant right yeah it it's basically think, right yeah it from the way i take from it it's basically competing with square yeah because th- years ago, that when Square right. first came out, they had the little credit card swipe sure, that you yeah, plugged yeah. in your headphone jack, and then they started with a Bluetooth setup, and they've gone on the full-on uh, point-of-sale systems and all that. I think this is Apple's attempt to tap into that market. Why? Wow. Oh, well, I mean, okay. Their so money. I assume it has to be one of the newer iPhones. They they didn't give any expect any specs out on what the requirements are, but I'm going to assume yes. When's it going to kick in? They said later this year. They they didn't give an exact date. But I'm not really surprised that they're doing it in the Apple stores. Uh, Cena and I went to New York City, oh, it's been several years ago, and we went in there, we made a purchase, and literally when we walked in, we went up to the front, told the person what we was needing, and there was not a cash register there. Yeah. Like, they pulled their phone out, and we told them what we wanted, they swiped the credit card right there, and it was all did right there, and all right there, it was just one big right. countertop, I mean, there was no cash register, no nothing. I could see that at an Apple store, like a cell right. phone store, because you assume at the point 
at that point, the person working there, they give them a phone to use. Right. So it's a, it's a business right. deal. I could kind of see that, but you go in Walmart or Kroger's or wherever where you do your shopping, you're not really going to, that won't have a, a deal. Right. I don't know. I mean, I've seen some merchants that have the little handheld. Like we go, you go out and eat anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. They have a little thing they bring to your table, like, hey, you can tap your card. or Right. But, I mean, now it's so easy to use a QR code. Like, I paid to eat out um, last week, and it was just take your phone, QR code it, pay your bill, done and done. Right. And I didn't even have to touch anybody's dirty phone. Right. My own phone. Yeah. But I kept my germs to myself. Right. So, I don't, I don't know. That's cool. I haven't seen the QR code. Yeah. 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 The restaurant's going to that. It's huh. amazing. You don't touch crap. Okay. They bring you a little your receipt and just set it there and QR code it and go straight to their payment server. Payment server and bam, 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 done and done. Get up, walk out. Now, have you seen the new Amazon? Stores? I mean, this is Apple, so you know. yeah. Have you seen the Amazon, the Amazon Go stores that they're popping up? I've seen an Amazon store, but I didn't really understand. Like we didn't go in or anything. Oh, but, you should have went in. But it said Amazon and they had stuff. Say you missed an opportunity. Well, we were we weren't really there for that, I guess. Uh, well, yeah, well, neither would I. But you know I how? Well, one. all right. So you're not there yet, Joe. <laughs> but when your daughter gets older and she forgets like her soccer cleats or her soccer shin guards okay. or her soccer socks, yeah. and you're at a soccer tournament, you run in and you get whatever and you get back out of there. Well, okay, but with the these Amazon stores, literally you walk in, fill your card up, arms up, whatever, and just walk out. So you can do that, sheets. Really? Yeah, Sheets has a Sheets Go app. Yeah, but you don't even scan nothing. There's you don't scan anything with your phone. You literally pick it up and walk out, and it knows to automatically charge you. I don't. I don't believe that. Yeah, they, they've been te they've been testing stuff, it. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's thing. like, hey, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> and just walk out. People all over America is like, hey, listen, this Joe guy <laughs> said I don't have to do crap. Yeah. Pick it up, walk out. And they're like, no, no, no. You got to at least have your phone with you. Yeah, you got to log think, into your Amazon account. You got to do something. I think like you, you tap your phone <coughs> on the way in and like it tracks okay, you. That makes more the store. sense. Right. And then, but you, but there's no like scan this, scan this, scan this. It's literally you just pick it up and when you walk out, it triggers whatever right. and automatically charges your account. Yeah. Okay. I could see that unless you're an Apple user and then in two years you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, but that's, yeah, Sheets is, Sheets is weird. I don't understand it. So you walk into Sheets and you have your, your Sheets app and you scan everything just like you with the cash register. Yeah. And then you just, hit pay when you're done and you walk out. Walmart has started that. What I don't understand though is how do they know that you paid for it versus you're just walking out with stuff. True. I mean, yeah, that it's is baffling to me because we've yeah. literally, my one buddy that we travel with quite a bit, he does it all the time and I'm just like, man, I feel like I'm stealing. Now, I feel like somebody should be at the door saying, oh, okay, cool, let me see your phone receipt or yeah. you know, something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like they do at Sam's Club, have that person check. Yeah, their, yeah, check receipts occasionally. Yeah, but, but I mean, no, you just you just scan it and walk right out the door, and I'm like, how do they know you paid? Yeah, that's crazy. There's uh, one in uh, Cincinnati, it looks like. I'm just trying to see if there's any Amazon store. Any kind of close to us, yeah. That's yeah. probably where I was when I saw it because we play soccer in Cincinnati quite a bit, and I had to run in and get soccer socks because uh, somebody blew out a hole in their sock, and I was like, ah. Now, now you know what to look for. Well, I saw it. I, I was yeah. like, that's pretty cool. But, I, yeah, I did not have time to stop. It was just to <laughs> run in, get soccer stocks, run out. Mm -hmm. So for episode 100, <coughs> we take a field trip to Cincinnati one weekend and go check out the Amazon store and see what we can carry out. <laughs> oh, boy. But we're going to use Dave's So for episode 100, we got to go bail Joe out of jail because, uh, you know, he's going to be stealing stuff. <laughs> we'll walk in JCP and be like, hey, listen, it works over there. Let's try yeah. it here. <laughs> First, we have to find a J.C. Penney store, and then oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's the first thing came by. Yeah, think of them all. Well, I think well, I think Parkersburg still has their J.C. Joe's Penney. gonna walk out of Dick's Sporting Goods. <laughs> Don't worry, put it on my Amazon account. Yeah, <laughs> get with the times, bub. <laughs> Apple, jeez Louise. Joe, for this Apple thing, so I could take a credit card and hold it up to an Apple. Yeah, if your phone? credit card has the tap to pay feature, you can. I thought it. all credit cards had that. Uh, there's still some that don't. Oh, jeez. Apple credit cards. I Probably. Guess. Yeah. No, <coughs> Apple came with a brilliant idea to make theirs out of metal and then got mad because they w it was being bent all the time and, no w and half the readers <laughs> wouldn't read them. 
Or they wanted to be different. That's funny. That's what they did. They came out when they came out with the Apple credit card. They made theirs out of like aluminum or something. Right. And half the readers were not reading them. And then when people oh, touched their purses and wallets, they were getting bent. And uh. those, those square readers, they're not very expensive, are they? No, no. But I guess it's just like. I already have an iPhone. All I gotta do is download an app, and I can start. The only right. problem is the other person has to have an iPhone. So you know, you're taking like let's card. just assume right. like we go over to Mountain State Arts and Crafts Festival, and our kids sell the glass uh, work that we do down here in entrepreneurial class and art class. Right. It would have to be an, an iPhone user buying the stuff. Right. And then I would have to figure out how to link the iPhone to some magic account that I don't have. Right. Which, if you're a vendor, you would have one. But I'm just saying. Let's right. assume I'm a vendor. So then I would have to have an iPhone. So I could sell it to a quarter of the people that have iPhones. Right. whoop de do. <laughs> I could get a square and I can sell to 100% of the people. Right. So, yeah. And be much more convenient. Yeah. So, like, you wouldn't be able to... That's what I mean. That doesn't make sense to me because it's... It, you're right. Now you're only doing Apple users that way. You wouldn't be able to, like, do a Samsung <coughs> Pay and tap that way or no? According to the way they're... Oh, come on now. Uh, Apple, they have to be exclusive. Yeah. yeah. There's no sharing. Yeah, well, there can't be inclusion of everybody. We've got to keep somebody out. <laughs> we got to keep half of our market shut out on this. Half? Yeah, it's about 50-50. Is it really? Mm hmm No way. Yeah, I mean, there's... We, there's, should, do a, we there's, should do a Facebook poll. There's slight fluctuations one way or the other. It, it, the needle kind of goes back and forth, but it's just about 50-50. Who buys Apple stuff now? That's Nothing. crazy talk. <laughs> he didn't buy it. He got it for free. If he didn't. He hasn't bailed yet, so. Ah, uh, we're working on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're anyway. All that. right. So Apple number one, take your dirty phone and touch it to someone else's dirty phone, and you can transfer money. Yeah. If you're both Apple users. Yeah. Okay. All right. Apple's number two story. Uh. So yeah, Justin's going to catch a lot of. Justin, on this one. He's gonna, he's you're gonna, welcome. He's going to hate this one. I knew today was going to be a good day. <laughs> I got out of bed and I was like, I just can't wait for this show. It's going to be awesome, and Joe is going to be great, and Justin is just going to take it like a champ. Yeah. So, so this one's really giving Apple a black eye. So, hold on, hold on, and get ready for the ride. So, Apple says, "quote A small portion of iPhones recorded interactions with Siri, even if you opted out and told it not to do that." Oh boy. Yeah. Breach of confidentiality. Uh huh. So you could use Siri, but you could opt out of having it be recorded. Yes. And <coughs> but yet it still recorded you. Yeah, a small number. Yeah. Siri, lunatic fringe, volume high. <laughs> <laughs> so Apple says that it's deleting any inadvertently collected recordings, which is creeps me out even more. Sure. So Apple's release of iOS 15.4 Beta 2 fixes a bug that may have recorded interactions with Siri on some devices, regardless of whether you opted out, according to a report from ZDNet. Oh, boy. The bug, which was first introduced in iOS 15, automatically enabled the improved Siri and dictation settings that gives Apple permission to record, store, and review your conversations with Siri. So Apple told ZDNet that it has since deleted any recordings collected in connection with the bug. After discovering the bug, the company reportedly turned off the feature to many users when it released iOS 15.2, but it fully fixed the bug with this new beta version. As ZDNet points out, this is the reason why you might get a prompt asking you for your permission to enable the improved Siri and Dictation feature once you install the new beta update. And uh, with iOS 15.2, we turned off the improved Siri and dictation settings for many Siri users while we fixed a, a bug introduced with the new version of iOS, Apple said in a statement to ZDNet. This bug inadvertently enabled the setting for a small portion of devices since identifying the bug, we stopped reviewing and are deleting audio received from those affected devices. So this it seems like a kind of bug that Apple should explicitly warn all of its users about and urge them to ensure their phones are up to date while notifying anyone affected. Instead, <laughs> time out. <laughs> it seems like. Yeah, but instead. I mean, did they really write that? It seems like. Well, no. This is the article. That's what I mean. Yeah. Somebody wrote it seems like. Yeah. Instead, I'm pretty sure that should be Apple should. Yeah. 
have already done this. But, but here's the path that wow. Apple chose. Ugh. The company has left users in the dark about how many phones were affected or when. Without transparency, there's no way to tell how many have had their conversations recorded and listened to by Apple employees despite asking to avoid exactly that outing, that outcome. So if you have an iPhone, now might be a good time to update your phone software, if you haven't already. <laughs> this one doesn't affect me, but I, I feel bad for the people it does. I never use Siri, but maybe a lot of people do. Do you use uh, Hey Google, Joe? Hey not, Google. Not very often. Hey Google, Lunatic Fringe, volume high. <laughs> No, but like here lately, like literally yesterday, I was where was I at? I was sitting sitting in an office doing some work yesterday, and I just heard my phone go boop, and I thought nobody said the trigger word, uh-huh. and it's just been doing a lot here lately. So parent, so it wouldn't be surprising. Two weeks, I'm doing a story on Google doing the same thing. But, <laughs> but yeah, I found it. <coughs> I find it weird that Apple had this flaw. And hurry up and cover in their tracks saying, oh, we deleted all these recordings that we made of you that you weren't aware of. And they won't give exact details as to how many devices and yeah. what exactly was recorded. Or, yeah. yeah, they're being pretty vague just using the word small. They can mean anything. Yeah, out of 2 million phones, 500,000 is still a lot. <laughs> So th- this is going to be interesting to see how this rolls out. Oh, boy. So it takes the people that, like us three, that have said our phones sit here and listen to us even when we're, even when we don't, you know, talk to it. We just have a conversation. This further proves our point. <laughs> <laughs> that our conspiracy theory is true. <laughs> I just... <sighs> Probably the how much can this happen? I just don't understand. I mean, you know, we've we've talked about it before. You know, I was talking with Kale as we were driving down the road last summer, you know, about, hey, summer job, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, an hour later, I checked Amazon or Facebook, and it's like, hey, work from home. Yeah, I'm like, no way. Yeah. <coughs> you know, we talked about the different instances when that has happened. Mm-hmm. And your phone's listening. And then people are all about, oh, violation of my rights, blah, blah, blah. And then their phone listens to them, and they refuse to give up their phone. Right. And now it's Siri. Now it's this. I mean, it's been happening for years. Right. And we just keep plowing right along. Yeah, we just, we hmm. get mad, but yet we don't. Yeah. Nothing we, actually happens. Yeah, we don't do. I, we'll talk about this again in six months. Yeah. Yeah, we oh, won't. by the way, you're, you know, because what was it before? Is the vacuum cleaner or the Roomba or? Yeah, the Roombas that you know, had the little the, cameras. The yeah. little cameras, their <laughs> secret, you know, your laptop. People put tape over their laptop cameras. Which is good, which is actually a good thing. Oh, it is, but I'm yeah. just saying we know about it. Right. And it's okay. Yeah. We yeah. Just, th- just cover it with tape. Yeah, it's kind of weird that we get mad. Yeah. But yet we don't do anything to change it. Yeah, there's no consequences. It's yeah. just cover it with tape. That, that's how you fix this we, problem. We almost act like cancel culture. We all get on up for, ah, we should do this, and get our pitchforks and hoop and holler and scream, and then, ooh, something shiny. And it just... <laughs> <laughs> but I have to have that new laptop. I don't yeah. care if it's fine on me. I have to have it. Yeah. And then we get distracted, and Ugh. and then we completely forget about it. Yeah, it makes me wonder, who would actually say, oh, yeah, and tick the box. I want... Apple to record every all my interactions with Siri, but it's probably the majority. People just like don't even well <coughs> think to opt out or Apple turned the feature on automatically yeah. and you had to actually opt out of it, which is even crazier. Yeah. Wow. And and what they do is their their pitch on that is is well we record that so we can better understand how you speak so we can be much more accurate. Mm-hmm. In other words it doesn't understand hillbilly, so we want to understand hillbilly better. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit off topic, but have you? Oh, heard, it's heard okay. Uh, some of the AI-generated voices, like basically, well, AI can listen to like hundreds of hours, thousands of hours of Obama, and then sound just like him. Do like a robot voice with his mannerisms. No, like I that. didn't. I've not seen that. Yeah. Well, that's just creepy. Yeah. With the deep fake video and the fake audio, I mean, ten years, there's yeah, no way to there'd be no way to prove otherwise. Just on the face of it, no. Really. What, what if a video is real or 
mistake. There's probably the other way to figure it out, but right. If somebody watches it, we could be. Yeah, so the, I see what you're saying. So anybody's voice can will be faked here before long, mm -hmm. and you won't be able to tell. Huh? Man, sneaky videos galore. Uh huh. Well, Joe says, Joe. I did not say that. Yeah. Listen, Joe. Yeah. I said it. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> just like you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What are we getting into here? Uh, Where does it end? That's the question in my mind. It all blows up. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, go on, Joe. Hit the nuclear button. I was just I thinking, you know, at some point, AI, there has to be a way for, um, not even AI is an issue, but there has to be a way for people to figure out what's fake and not. Yeah. Or what's made up. And that, that's where... I guess there'll be a, a policing side of it, that, and then there'll be the actual the other side of it, just like anything else. Right. You know, there's an email, or like, you know, how people, they, they start figuring out if a photo is Photoshopped by digital tracing. and Right. So, yeah, the, it'll so leave, there'll be something like yeah, that. Yeah, it'll leave a footprint somewhere. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, like the digital police and their job is to determine all this, yeah. Or not. Yeah. Guys sitting around in. Which I have to admit, the the virtual police now are doing such a bang up job. I was selling, I was put on Facebook Marketplace the other day. It was a, uh, it was for barbecues. It was like this little bottle that you put your marinade in, and then you brush had little brushes on the end of it that you brush, put your marinade on when you're uh, grilling out. And it was brand new in the package. The package even said, you know, uh, baster or whatever. Yeah. Facebook, in their infinite wisdom, somehow claimed that that was an alcoholic product and, and threw it off of their and threw it off the marketplace. I said, "What?" They wow. said, "Well, you can repeal that." So I clicked repeal and and submitted the information. Said, "Look, it is a meat baster. Look, it says right here on the box that's what it is." And they still came back, "Nope." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, AI is working out real well here." <laughs> None for you, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> You can't sell that here. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, this is just this uh, is technology at its finest. That's kind of crazy when there's not an appeal process that involves something that's I, I don't even know. I I want to say worthwhile, but I don't think that's the right word. That's legitimate. Yeah. I mean, man, it's just nope. Okay, yeah, still no. Yeah. Because. Well, and then I seen a friend of mine post a couple of days after that. He uh. It was basically the Ford versus Chevy uh, discussion, but on tractors, and he st and made the comment of if the tractor is a blue, it's not worth owning or something like that. Yeah. And Facebook flagged it for like hate speech. <laughs> he said, "How is that hate speech?" And somebody posted because green tractors matter too. <laughs> <coughs> it's like, yeah, th this is th these algorithms and artificial intelligence it just proves that. Yeah. Still struggling. Yes. Hmm. I can't wait. <laughs> Story number three, Google. Oh, we have some good news on the Google front. No way. Yeah. Okay, well, I like where you're going with this. So two Apple stories, which are 99% always to the negative, <laughs> and then a Google story, which sometimes is negative, but now it's going to be a good one. Yeah. So... You guys have heard me preach and preach and scream and hoop and holler about two-factor authentication. Yep. Google announced that its uh, decision to default two-factor authentication on their accounts has cut account breaches in half. That's pretty good. Really? Yeah. So the search firm, so Google revealed that uh, the account breaches dropped by 50% among u those users where two-factor authentication was auto-enabled. The plunge was proof that the extra factor is effective in safeguarding your data. Google said although it didn't disclose the exact number of compromised accounts, it's still half still huge. What is this two-factor authentication you speak of, Joe? <sighs> really? <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew me taking the initiative to do two-factor authentication would be great, Joe. Exactly. It's not like you had to pester me for a year or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the company said it didn't it didn't say how rapidly to, it expected two-factor authentication to spread, but promised to continue the rollout through this year. More than 150 million people have auto-enrolled so far, 
including more than 2 million YouTube creators. The company also promised more security upgrades to help mark a uh, safer internet day. As of March, Google will let you opt in to an account level safe browsing option that keeps you from visiting known harmful sites. So Google is really stepping up their s security game. While Apple's let recording you without your knowledge, Google is <laughs> doubling down on security. Ah, uh, Dustin. I feel like today's just for you. Yeah. <laughs> Happy 91st show. <laughs> we should rename it Joe, or, I don't know. I can't think of anything super clever, but Justin's show. Yeah. Just to keep it simple. <laughs> All right, well, good news on Google's end. Hmm. Yeah, so if you have Is that like across the board? Yeah. So that's that's a massive. Yeah. This You're is right, that is, that's massive. This is under all the Google umbrella. So if you do not have two-factor authentication turned on on anything, please go turn it on on your social medias, your emails, your shopping. If it has your banking, if it allows two-factor authentication, turn it on. So, Joe, okay. just in case there are people out there like me okay. that didn't understand, didn't know what you're talking about, and just said, hey, listen, I'm old school. Two-factor authentication sounds scary, and I don't know what you're talking about. Break it down in really, really simple terms for the listeners out there okay. that need to know what it is. So two-factor authentication <coughs> works like this. It's something you know with something you have. So the something you know is your password. So when you log in, you put in your username and your password. And then it takes a second step and says, hey, we need a six-digit code from you, which is something you have, which you can pull from your phone or your tablet, <coughs> and punch this extra code in. To make sure we know it's actually you trying to get in. So if Dave's trying to hack my account and he has my password, well, he tries to log in. He goes, hey, we need that code. And Dave goes, I don't have that code. And then and wherever he's trying to log in, goes, guess what? You don't get in. So it's just that extra layer of security to keep the bad guys out and keep your account safe. Yep. Or Gmail will, you put your password in and then on your phone it'll say, is this, are you trying to log in yes or no? And yes. Yeah. 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 I see that a lot like if I if I move locations. Like we go to soccer on the weekends and we're out of town and I'll take my computer to do some work, check emails, whatever, and sometimes if I use like the hotel internet or whatever, it'll be like, Is this you? Yeah. And you gotta answer a tech like they'll text you a code. Right. Which I really enjoy. Yeah, it, it's a small Joe. Hey, it's a small inconvenience, but it's keeping you safe. I'm like, of course it's me. I'm on my computer. <laughs> Who else would it be? We, well, it I doesn't understand. know it's you because you blocked your because you put tape over your webcam. <laughs> this might be true. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I understand it, and it does work like that, and it's super simple. I mean, honestly, at first I was like, this is such a pain in the rear end, but now I'm like, eh, it's a text. I just enter the four digit code and go on. Right. To keep my stuff safe, which right. I mean, you know. It's I got to think of it like this, though. If you're a hacker and you're hacking my stuff, boy, oh boy, <laughs> what a waste of time. Well, I think of it as like it's the seatbelt in your car. Yeah, it's an inconvenience to put the seatbelt on, but I, can, like, I like a seatbelt. Well, but you know what I mean. It, it takes two seconds out of your day to put on a yeah. seatbelt. It takes two seconds to put it in that code. Yeah. You can either drive down the road without your seatbelt and take the chance, or you can take that two seconds, put that seatbelt on, and and save yourself. Yep. It has caused me a little bit of headache at times when, like, I don't know, trying to help my mom out with something, log into her email, and then she doesn't have cell service where she's at, so she jumps in the car to yes. go up the road so she can get the code to send to me, and then just a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. But, yeah, situations like that, I completely understand because I get, I run into that a lot where I'm trying to work on somebody's account, and for security reasons, that the two factor gets in, so then I have to go back and call them, okay, send me a code. No, that code's expired. Send it, read the new one to me. Yeah. Because yeah. I ran into that with my mom the other day. I was working on her. It was her wife's stuff I was working on. And I was trying to log into the account. Of course, she was out and about. So it said, we're going to text you a code. So I was like, Mom, I need the code. And then it had timed out. So she texted me. I was like, yeah, I need the new code. I just said, you know, I need it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that works. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there are legitimate reasons like that. I, I've been in that same exact same situation. Yeah. but. For the most part, eh. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't run into any major inconveniences. Because, you know, you've drilled it into my head, Joe, how important <laughs> <laughs> how important it is. 
And honestly, it is because, you know, my, like my work stuff, not that any hacker would ever get any benefit, but, you know, you have sensitive information, and you know what you're sending. Right. You know, whatever, dealing with policies, procedures. Right. So, yeah, it's important. So, for everybody out there, one more time. Turn on two-factor authentication. Or authentication. There you go. Pretty easy to do, pretty simple to use. And, if, again, if you don't know what it is, call Joe or Cena. They'll explain it to you. Yes. If you're an Apple user, you'll have it available to you in two years. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome, Joe. <laughs> uh, so you think the next step is three-factor? They're going to oh, make us do even more stuff? I, I, I'm scared to see what's coming down the pike yeah, on, on all that. Hmm. I don't even know what that would be. Maybe facial recognition on top of the other two. Or I don't know. Do you guys use the facial recognition to log in your phone? No. I don't either. I have a friend that does, though. They do it all the time. I have a lot of customers that do because if I'm working on their phone and their screen goes black, I go, hold still, I need your face. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of facial recognition, I'm, I'm curious. I think I know how it worked out, but my sister-in-law called Cena or texted Cena the other evening in a panic. Uh, her daughter picked up her phone and unlocked it with her face. And she goes, how'd that happen? And Cena said, how did that work? I said, the only way that I would know that she that, that works is she got her mom's phone and picked it up and, you know, went into the facial pro, facial unlock feature and added her face to that profile. I said, that's the only way that I know that would work. I said, have her delete the profile completely, recreate everything, and see what that does. I said, yeah. but I've never... I mean, it can always happen. I'm not going to knock that, but I just found that awful odd. Yeah. I, maybe a one in a million deal? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. I said that there's there's more to that story than there's being told. There's something yeah, not something right. Else. Huh. Okay. Well, by golly. Two bad, two two bad apples and a Google. Yeah, <laughs> that's a perfect title for this episode. Two bad that apples was, and a Google. Yeah, that is a good one. <laughs> Justin, that's what you get for using Apple. That's what you get. So now, if Justin does decide to go over to Android, then who do we make fun of? I don't know. Well, Cena. Then I can no, I'm not making fun of Cena. Make fun of Apple people too. <laughs> <laughs> Justin doesn't care because it doesn't matter to him at that point. Yeah. He's just like now I can get off. That train and get on this bandwagon <laughs> and making fun of people. <laughs> Man, tough deal. Okay. All right. Well, Joe, let's move on All now right. that we've uh, put the two bad apples under the cart. <laughs> let's talk about this product review. Yes, this one I'm excited about. Really? Does that yes. affect me? If, well, it all depends on if you want to sign up for it, but yes. Can I sign up for it through ways? No. Wise? No. Unfortunately, but wow. you can use Wise products on this. Really? Yeah. Okay. I have a couple of Wise products. Okay. Sure wish they'd sponsor our show. Yeah, I sent them a tweet uh, feature in last week's episode. I've not heard anything back. So apparently, either one they haven't watched it, or they two two wa did watch and go. Like, who's yeah, this we're not Joe guy? <laughs> Why does he keep tweeting at us? Yeah, one that they didn't watch, or two they did watch and go, yeah, we don't <coughs> want our name associated with that. <laughs> <laughs> the Joe guy seems all right, but Justin, I don't know. <laughs> He's an Apple user. Yeah. <laughs> And he has this uh, portable battery thing that takes three <laughs> weeks to charge and discharges in two minutes. We don't know what's going on there. He's going to burn his house down. We don't want involved with that. Do you still have that? Do you still have that one, Justin? Yep. Okay. Yep. Oh boy. When that dies, it, it, it needs you'll to, have to, on the it, yeah, it oh, yeah. to be on the shelf. Definitely. You can join the other stuff. We we'll have. have to have it in close case. It's, it's about as handy as that rock. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's yeah. anything left of it, if it doesn't burn and melt. Before then, <laughs> disintegrate. Yeah, it's as handy as this rock right here. <laughs> Does about the same job. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure we could hook some electric up to this, and you'd get the same yeah. uh, vibes out of it, same worthiness. So, put it on back in there. There you go. So, recently, I'm pretty uh, sure that little pot is more handy than your yeah. <coughs> battery pa thing. Pa power bank. Power bank. Yeah. So recently, as of right before Christmas. Santa came early to us. Ooh, yeah. What did? How come Joe and I, or I mean Justin and I didn't get anything? 
Where's our phones at? We're supposed to have our Fisher Price they're Bluetooth still on, phones. They're still on back order. That's a lie. Yeah, scalpers bought them all and put them on eBay for twice, two to three times the money. Justin, are you checking to see where they're at? No, I'm just kind of looking into the home internet thing. Oh, boy. So we uh, signed up for T-Mobile Home Internet in, in the middle of December, and we have actually used it for a little over a month now. And uh, I, I'm trying to hold out my rating at the end, but as you guys can tell, the way oh. I've been... Time out. Joe, you're right. On eBay, $140. On you. Amazon, 225 Now, what I lie to you guys... Well, hold on. Where did you originally get them from? Best Buy. Best Buy had an exclusive on them. Best Buy. All right. Hold on. Let me see. Let me check Best Buy because they're supposed to be $60. Sold out. Ah, Joe. Man. So if you don't know what we're talking about, the little Fisher Price phone that has a little face on it and four little red wheels, they make one now that is a Bluetooth phone that works as a real phone, I guess? Yeah, it, it's an actual phone that you can connect to your cell phone via Bluetooth and actually right. make phone calls and talk on it. Right. So, so you can have it sitting on your desk at work, and people think you've gone crazy making phones on a Fisher-Price tool. Well, I'm pretty sure they think Justin's crazy anyway after the whole power bank and Apple <laughs> stories, but I thought it would be cool if we could sit there and talk to each other on our Fisher-Price Bluetooth phones because we do daycares and stuff like that. Right. Can you imagine the little kids walk in and be like, wait a minute, they're on the phone from the daycare. Well, it I'm doesn't work. I've tried it, but they're talking on it. Wait a minute. Well, I'm just wanting to see Denise's reaction when she looks over and sees you guys on, on these Fisher-Price phones and we don't preview her to the whole, all this. <laughs> and she thinks you both have actually lost it. Yeah, she's like, time out, boys. Take the phone back down to the daycare. It doesn't actually work. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, Denise, no, Denise, really, answer your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm calling for Denise on my Fisher Price phone. Yeah, <laughs> Denise, are you there? <laughs> Pretty sure you'll get a beating out of that, Joe. <laughs> You're like, Joe, why are you encouraging yeah. these boys? It'll last one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come yeah, back the next day and our Fisher Price phones are gone. Yeah. <laughs> they cycle us and I have to clean the office up. You know, but there's there's some things in life that's just worth taking the abuse on, so, and I'm willing to fall on that score. Well, I'm wait. We're waiting. <laughs> get us our phones, Joe. Well, you just seen them, the the results. Surely on Amazon. Oh, yeah, for the same markup as eBay. Because Best Buy had the exclusive on them. That's kind of crazy. Dumb scalpers. That's kind of messed up. They buy up to $225 on Amazon. There you go. Fisher Price Chatter Phone Bluetooth for Grown Ups. Man. Mm -hmm. Why? Why they gotta do that deal? You can buy the original one that doesn't talk to anybody except yourself. Eight forty four. There you go. I'm getting Justin that one, and then I'll get myself the Bluetooth one and be like, "Hey, Justin, just answer your phone, dude. What's wrong?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get going on here, buddy? Anyway, all right. Sorry. Back to the product review. Yes. Joe's super excited. Yes. T-Mobile Home Internet 5G. Okay. So this is the, when, with the new 5G services being rolled out, T-Mobile as well as AT&T and Verizon are now offering home internet off of these towers. So for just $50 a month with auto pay, you can have high speed, unlimited, no data caps, no slowdowns, no gotchas, anything like that for $50 a month. That is amazing. So and here and it gets better. <coughs> There's a zero dollar sign up fee with qualifying credit, no price hikes, no hidden fees, no annual contracts, and unlimited data. And when I say unlimited, there's no little star, no little asterisk, no little up to this day limit. No true no throttling? No. True unlimited wide open internet. Okay. So I'm doing the speed dot speedtest.net right now yes on sudden link yes which is our internet provider here which has traditionally been very fast you know we're doing we do all our shows and all the video uploads downloads and all that good jazz and all our virtual programming out of here right and it i don't i don't have a complaint with it right so we got 12 on the ping download 78 upload 7 well i'm actually getting a little better than that 
So with my R speeds now, keep in mind we're in rural West Virginia. Yeah, and that's true. Good and point. I'm only getting two bars of signal with with my base unit. But you have um, it with you? No, I had it's still at the house. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not shutting the internet off just to bring the box in. Well, I, yeah, I thought you were gonna loan it to one of us. <laughs> Justin needs it. Yeah. It's, yeah, uh, I, was <laughs> yeah. Getting, I was getting anywhere from 80 to 160 megabit download, and it stays about a 30, a steady 30 meg upload. So 30 meg. It's three times as fast as what we have here, and about the same download. Yeah, and three times the faster upload. Yeah. Why would that be? Why would it only? Why would it be the same download but faster upload? That's that's just that. T-Mobile apparently has a better connection than what Southern Lake has. I feel like you're a parent going to say, just because. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all you need to know. Okay. So, to find out if you are qualified for this program or this service, go to t-mobile.com slash ISP. And when you go there, uh, you'll see the little T-Mobile home internet box. And then you'll click the little button to the left that says get started. And from there, it'll ask you for your cell phone number and your home address. <clears throat> and then you click check availability. So here's a little catch. Here's a little hidden gem that a lot of people don't know about. And I've seen this play out t at least twice here within the last uh, two months. T-Mobile apparently has two different systems to check your home address. One on the internet and one that it's not public so uh, a friend of mine that put me onto this he lives over in Walton and he sends me a screenshot when he needed this fast internet yeah and I said what service do you have he said T-Mobile I said how in the world did you get that because I thought you know we'd never see that within the next two, yeah three yeah years. especially we're here in like you said rural mountainous West Virginia I said I've been literally on the T-Mobile <coughs> website every week putting in my address and keep being told no good luck you know we're not there yet you live in walton you're you know 15 miles further away from civilization than i am <laughs> how in the world are you getting it what he did was he had to actually call t-mobile yeah and they <clears throat> checked and on their other system whatever this other system is it says oh yeah you qualify so they send the box he plugs it in and get the same speeds if not a little better than what i'm getting so I put in my address here, mm -hmm. and it says, nope, not available at your address just yet, but our network's growing fast. Enter your info below, and you can be on a wait list, and that might influence where they upgrade next. Or it may already be in place, and you need to actually call them. Don't chat with them online, because I tried to chat online yeah. for me, and they said, nope, not going to happen. But then if you actually call them. That's how you got yours set up? Call. Well, I, I went another route, which I really don't want to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it's not illegal, but yeah, I got you. They, <clears throat> so, so if it's illegal, I wouldn't. I'd be getting it for free, but <laughs> so so you c you could get it, but maybe not. But well, because I I got I got aggravated. Yeah. I was I tried to call them and waited like thirty minutes and on hold. But now my cousin, within the last uh, two weeks, he. I showed him what I was the speeds I was getting. He goes, "Oh, I gotta look into this." So he ran. He did the same thing. They said his address didn't qualify, and he lives in town. He actually called T-Mobile, and they checked their so, uh, this other magic other system. They said, "Oh yeah, you can get it." So they sent him a box, and he plugged it in, and it's been just as fast as mine with zero issues. Yeah, I'm looking at this box, a silver box with on a stand. What is what is it? What is this? What that that's your internet modem. So. You can plug an Ethernet into that? Yep. In the back, there's two Ethernet ports, mm -hmm. and it there's a little screen at the very top of the box that has a little slider that shows your cell phone signal, your data usage, and all that. And actually, I didn't know this till I got it, and I think it's pretty cool. It actually has a built-in battery. So if the electric goes out, mm -hmm. it'll flip over to battery power, and it'll still operate. Mm -hmm. The only problem of it is is if it when it flips over to battery, I don't know why they wired it this way, but like... It has to reboot itself to go back in, to go into battery mode, and then once the electric is restored, it reboots itself again. It w it didn't just automatically flip back and forth. I don't know why they designed it like that, but well, hey, it has a battery backup built into it, so I'm not I can't complain too awful much about it. I have a question. Okay, so I I typed in our you know the patch office here. Right. I, it's downtown Spencer. Yep. 
not available. See that? That's How what, is that possible? I don't understand. That's what uh, that's what does make any sense. <clears throat> that's why if if you're interested in the service and the website says that the service isn't available yet, call T-Mobile. Let me give everybody the phone number here and call and look into it because it may actually you it may actually be available, but the the website isn't saying so. So the phone number to call is one eight four four. Eight three nine five zero five seven, and that's T-Mobile's uh, questions hotline, and ask about the home, home uh, the T-Mobile five G home internet service. And if you're a small business, they actually have a uh, small business package as well. And I think it's like maybe ten dollars more a month. And their website says set it up in fifteen minutes or less. Is that your experience? Yes, absolutely. Super, super easy. Oh yeah. So they bring, so they ship you the box, and literally I just plug it in. Turn it on, download the T-Mobile Wi-Fi app, and the app walks you through all the settings. And no contract. You, you can do it for like six months if you wanted, and then just... Oh, yeah, you can do it for two weeks. Two weeks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, the only catch is, is if you decide to cancel the service, you do have to ship the uh, modem back, or they'll charge you a $350 fee, which they're up front. They'll tell you that when you start signing up for the service, but it's... So you never have to pay for that nope. box they send you. That's pretty... Wow. Nope. Pretty uh, sweet deal, it looks like. Now, what's your prediction if someone, you know, like my mom, who without the booster, the cell phone booster, had zero bars, would you be able to use this in conjunction with a booster? Like I have not. The booster I gave her two bars. Yeah. I haven't tried that. I'm I'm anxious to see how well it would work. I don't see. Seems like it would be slower. Yeah, your speeds probably won't be as fast. But I don't see why it wouldn't work. I mean, fr from the point of proof of concept, I mean, you're still picking the signal. As long as the booster itself has 5G capability, which the newer boosters do, on on paper it should work now, but you may not get speeds as fast. But the, the crazy part of all this is with T-Mobile, the at least the website, how it determines what signal you can or can't, or who can get it and who can't, because my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, they're, I was, I was telling them about this over Christmas, and they said, man, it'd be nice if we could get that. And I've been to their house, and I know you can't get signal in there. Yeah. Put you in their address. Yeah, you can get service. That's crazy. So, so I told them, I said, according to T-Mobile, you can get it. They said, perfect. So they filled out the paperwork, and T-Mobile sent them a box, and this, the speed was useless. It was like one and a half meg download. Yeah. So they sent it back. And I said, see, right there proves the flaw in the system. I have it. It works perfectly, but you said technically I can't have it. They live in a place where I know you can't get signal, but they shipped them a box, no questions asked. Yeah. Uh, just now, I know on a side note, we talked about like AT&T, Verizon's getting ready to roll this out as well, but they're kind of on hold. Uh, actually, they're, they just now started rolling it out. Really? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Sir. So, so all, yeah, all three... Well, AT and T is still kind of dragging their feet on it, but Verizon, you can actually go on their website as well and check out their service. I have not used their service. So I don't know how uh, anything about it, but if you go to Verizon.com/5G, you can actually go on there and and check out and see if you qualify if your plans will work with them. Interesting. Okay, so I went on AT and T site, 5G, blah blah blah. Bring children's books to life with AT&T 5G. Unless you're Justin. <laughs> uh, I don't know what. I messed up here. I didn't go to the home thing. I'm looking for home. Yeah, when I what, do you, what do you call it, Joe? Uh, How should I search Ver it? Verizon... Just go to Verizon.com slash 5G. Well, I'm going to do AT&T because that's my oh, um, I took Home devices? No. AT&T. I looked up their uh, home internet, and AT&T, their website isn't ready yet. <coughs> so they're not showing. Okay. Yeah, because I checked it last er, earlier this week because I had a customer uh, ask about it. Hmm. With the, is this all possible through 5G? I mean, with... 4G, could there have been a product? That's a good like question. This? Why did they not roll this out with 4G, Joe? The the data speeds just wasn't there. 
5G is so much faster that that they have tested and can handle the 5G signal can handle the the data throughput speeds to be able to offer this kind of stuff. It's kind of crazy. So it's 50 bucks a month with auto pay or 55 with without it. They just that saves them some headaches of having to deal with all the payments and yep. just put it in there and we know you we're going to get it every month. Right. Wow. Well, so what were you doing for internet before? Did you have Frontier? Yeah. And so just a night and day. Oh, oh yeah. This, well, no, this is like Stone Age <laughs> in the modern society. Yeah. It's not even night and day. Yeah. Yeah. So and because we had Frontier, we still had their service. And the only reason I won't turn off their service for two reasons: one, if they ever decide to actually upgrade it, they can. Uh, I can be. I'm already in the system, so I should be able to get the upgrades. And two, if you live in West Virginia, <clears throat> and your speed, and you qualify for this lawsuit that se- uh, that the Attorney General's office sued Frontier over several years ago, you can pay ten dollars a month for internet until your issue is resolved. So, I fully qualified for that plan several years ago, and just that little jab every month of I know that I'm costing the Frontier money. I'm just, I just keep that, and I know that if I lose, if I turn off the service, I'll lose my bundle deal, and they'll, they'll jack it up twenty dollars a month. I mean, it's one of those, I, I'm just letting a sleeping dog lie. So, but just that little yeah. extra jab of every month, I know I'm costing them at least twenty, thirty dollars extra. Yeah. I just, I giggle. <laughs> so, so the service is sitting there. The, <clears throat> the box has been turned off since middle of December. So, ha ha, the frontier. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we've talked on the show before about you know getting high speed internet to towns like ours in West Virginia. I mean, it seems like the politicians and the various committees are all kind of focused on fiber and stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't are they aware of this? Is are they going to implement this as part of their whole well so, scheme? So here's the crazy part. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. I was doing some research while you guys were talking, but. So I can't get T-Mobile here. Cannot. Cannot get AT&T here. But now I can get Verizon. LTE Business Internet is available. Yeah, or just... Well, it says based on Verizon's 4G LTE network. Okay, yeah, you got to watch it because that's probably going to have some data caps or something. Sounds like their websites just aren't super accurate at determining yeah. availability. And that's data allowances. I almost think that's a... Select router. But, uh, I'm sorry, Justin, what was, Go ahead, what was yeah. the question you How asked? How might this be implemented as part of the getting high-speed internet, you know, from a, like, huh. on the politician's level of, like, they're spending money trying to get high-speed internet to West Virginia. Yeah. yeah might, this th- might they implement this? Th- getting this definitely does help bridge that gap. I don't know how they would. It looks like it's already ready. They don't. They wouldn't really need to do anything. Right, but maybe more five G towers in West Virginia. Yeah, I mean that can that that is definitely an option uh, to help help bridge the gap. Uh, it'll help uh, tremendously narrow the issue of getting broadband. But like in your case with your mom's house, yeah. she can't get cell phone signal there. So helping out roll out the the fiber into into those areas will help out as well. This is, uh, at least in West Virginia, this is a huge step to help resolve our issue of uh, lack of internet availability. And, and actually, uh, Cena and I, we actually just sent, uh, finished up a letter yesterday to send to the state to help discuss about the broadband issues that we see as a business in Rome County and, and how important it is that we get broadband. So something like this in an area... Like in my case, where Frontier is useless and that's our only option of uh, broadband, this actually gives us the opportunity to actually have true broadband now and actually do what we need to do to get get things done online. So, this is a huge step in the right direction. Yeah, kind of crazy, but you know, I don't know. I'm still baffled how you can get it out at Walton, but you can't get it in downtown Spencer. Well, that, that's why I'm, that's why I say if if the website says no, call that number and talk to T-Mobile or a T-Mobile rep and and 
and have them check this whatever this other magic system it is because literally uh, I've seen it at least twice where they say the website says no and if you try to chat with the personal line the, their website will say no but if you call them they can check this other system and go oh yeah it's available give me your address and I'll send you a box yeah, I just still though it's kind of silly. I agree with Justin. The, you know, the websites aren't up to date. It's kind of a I don't know. Yeah, crap, it's crapshoot of. <coughs> huh. Yeah, it, it's it's weird. Well, when you first you know, mentioned this, you know, I was thinking, oh well, I, I'll have to sign up for a contract and I'll have to be a T-Mobile customer, but no, no, no contract, no nothing. Right, you just so, yeah. yeah. <coughs> we just need it to be available here in town. What the heck? That or have to jump through the hoops to make to yeah, get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else on that story? Uh, other than the pros and cons. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I forgot we were doing product <laughs> review. I was busy <laughs> griping because <laughs> as I checked the websites here, I can't get it here in town. So, yeah. Right. Quick question, Joe. No, okay. longer, no longer interested, Joe. <laughs> have, have you observed situations where there's like five different devices all streaming or not five you have multiple devices in your house and it's still able to yes we have yet, we have yet to choke it down because okay. i have uh i have a mesh system set up with uh, between our house and my mom and dad's they live right behind us and and i bought and i literally we got signed up for the service and i told them i said you guys need a roku to stream why you'll thank me later yeah Literally an hour later, dad or, dad's sitting there go, just going through and just watching everything under the sun and while on his laptop watching YouTube and all that. So, yes, Justin, I have seen this play out. We have had multiple devices stream at the same time and have yet to throttle this. So, yes, I I, I stress tested it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And, and when we got our first bill and seen our data usage, yes, I stress tested the first month. <laughs> and, I, and trust me, if I was on... A regular hotspot, I would in about three days I would have been hit with some kind of thousand dollar charge or uh, a shut off. I mean, there if they if T-Mobile had the opportunity to shut me down, they should they should have in my book. But I've also read an article where uh, someone got this service and on purpose tested their limit and used almost a hundred terabyte of data in a month, and they mm. didn't get slowed down or anything. Now I'm not I'm nowhere even close to that. In my first month of use, but mm -hmm. yeah, trust me, I if, if Team Bubble was going to throttle me at some point, they had plenty of opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll All say, right. I'll say I, we used a little over two terabyte of data in our first month, wow. but, but we had, but it was kind of uh, like this next month. I don't even, I mean, I don't expect it to be that high. I'll be shocked if I am, because that first month, I'm, you know, I was testing it out i was backing up stuff and uploading content and and, and streaming i mean i was putting it through its tests yeah. so and i had actually had some files on backup that i didn't realize i had on backup so they was huge files that i i didn't really need to be backed up on on our cloud storage so it really ate a big chunk i was like oh man i, did, I forgot that was there yeah. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> So it's like, yeah, I'm definitely, I don't need that thing backed up, so I'm not going to back that one up again. So, so yeah, it was, it's interesting, and T-Mobile had pr uh, had up to every opportunity to throttle me using two and a half terabytes of data, and oh, month, yeah. but never, never touched it. Nice. All right, well, let's go into the pros and cons. All right. Pro us up, Joe. Gold star coming, maybe. So the pros, the cost, $50 a month with auto pay, 55 without, Yeah. for... That's Phenomenal super cheap. speeds, super yeah. cheap, and and it just and it works. Yeah. Uh, the second pro ease of setup. Literally, you get the box. You don't have to string any cable in beside your house like you do with fiber or cable or anything like that. The only cable you need to string is the cable going from the box to the electric outlet. That's the only wire you need, and you just turn it on, download the app to your phone, and you're ready to go. Uh, next pro, no data caps. Again. Nice. T-Mobile had every opportunity, but didn't. It's no data caps. It's nice. And one bonus uh, pro that I was not expecting was a was a nice surprise. But the built-in battery backup. I did not realize how important that was until now that I have it. It's like, 
did I need it? No, but as an os as a an option, that's just awesome. Yeah. So hats off T Mobile for thinking ahead on that one. I was nice. I was greatly impressed. Okay. So now on to the cons. Cons. Yeah. Not a lot of cons. Okay. Justin, you might be onto something. This might be like a five star review. Now the the, the let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. The, the cons. cons. There's <clears throat> not a lot, but uh, they kind of hold some weight. Okay. This first one doesn't hold a lot of weight, but it's still a con regardless. The modem rebooting itself automatically when you had to switch from the battery to electric. I did find that as a minor inconvenience whenever I was setting it up because I was I was testing it because I wanted to try try different areas in the house see if I could find it one spot that had better signal than the other. Yeah. So whenever I would unplug it, I have to wait two minutes for it to boot back up to test it, and then run take it back in, plug it back into electric, wait another two minutes. So for that initial setup, that was kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah. But I'm not like most people. Most people would just plug it in and, and be done with it. Where I'm sitting here going. I was going to say, you're a tech guru, Joe. That's not fair. Yeah. Well, that is fair, <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean. Right. So most people will just plug it in and, and go. So like I said, it's not a big deal breaker. It came with a battery backup. I was not expecting that at all. So I'm not re- I can't really throw a lot of hate towards that, but. It's an issue, but not a deal breaker. The big issue I do have is this whole split system setup with T-Mobile, where if you go on their website and you don't address doesn't qualify, you can call their hotline and talk to somebody and the, their their support people, which are phenomenal people. I'm not hating on those people. Yeah. But just the whole structure setup of, well, if the website says no. We have there's a plan B in place that if you call and you wait thirty to forty five minutes on hold, and I'm talking first hand experience, yeah, that you might still be able to get the access if you if you hold out long enough, you can call and I don't understand it exactly. Why wouldn't they just update their as Justin said, have their website be fluent with what's going on? I mean, exactly. in today's day and age, you got to call to yeah. harass somebody into making. This work for yeah, you. Yeah, that if if the service may actually be be available, but the website's not updated, that's my big issue with this whole setup. Yeah, is well, this road eh, it may or may not work, but now if you get down this road, you still you stand a better chance. And I'm just don't understand the the logic behind it. Is it free shipping to buy when they send you the box, or yeah, you, you have to pay for it. Uh, if I did have to pay shipping, it wasn't much, but I don't even think it, I paid shipping. It was literally, we'll send you the box. And there was actually a perk I get. Uh, if I signed up for YouTube TV, I get a discount on that, and then I get Paramount Plus free for a year. The folks you mentioned that had to send theirs back, did they have to pay the shipping? I don't think so. Uh, I didn't talk to them to see, mm-hmm. I, to see if they had to ship, if they had to pay to ship back, but most of the time they don't. I mean, they they throw in a disclaimer that you will have to pay three hundred fifty dollars for the modem if you decide not to ship the modem itself right. back. But I don't, I don't think they would, or they did. Yeah. So either way, I mean that's a small price to pay. Yeah. For what could be fantastic. Yes. And you found it fantastic. Yes, have had zero issues out okay. of it. Any other cons? No, that was it. All right. So just for those of us that are short of memory. Pros, yes. cost, ease of use. No no data caps. No data caps are choking it down. Right. And the battery. Cons. And the oh, and the battery backup. Yeah, the battery Sorry, backup. Battery. Which doesn't make sense to me, though. I mean, I guess wireless would work, but nothing else. Like, if you hooked a router or something, it wouldn't. That, that, that'd all be right, turned Right, but off. The, the modem itself has built-in Wi-Fi, so worst so. case scenario, if your electric goes out, you could still hook your phone up to the... Yeah, still get Wi-Fi. Yeah. And <coughs> be able to phone and te- call and text Well, you'd be able to do that anyway, though, right? Well... Your phone wouldn't shut off. Right, but if you had a laptop or a tablet. Yeah, your laptop or tablet would still be able to connect. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, cons? Uh, the modem rebooting, the modem reboot, reboot switching procedure. issue with the yeah. battery. Right. And then that split system setup where you have to call to. Yeah. If, if <coughs> the website says no. Okay. All right. Justin, what are you thinking? Where's this going to fall on uh, Joe's rating of stars, one to five? One being terrible, five be I guess we could do zero. Zero being don't even look at it like yeah. your power bank but uh yeah uh, and five <laughs> being just absolutely outstanding no flaws at all uh, four and a half four and a half Ooh. 
I think you're right. I think it is a four and a half. I don't think this will garner the coveted Joe five star spot. Actually, no, I'm going five. Right. I think the two cons are just him being finicky. Yeah. Otherwise, he's ran <laughs> 60 million terabytes through it. And how can a tech guy not be five star in that? Yeah, yeah. you might be right. All right, Joseph, where do we fall? Okay. So I'm giving this one a solid four. Oh, five. my gosh. Okay. What happened? That the whole split system. That's ridiculous. I'm, that's holding I a lot of weight. I didn't give that enough credit. Yeah, I'm hold that one's holding a lot of weight cuz okay. So so this one's going to it's this this review's going to be a little it's kind of okay. a mixed bag. Oh, yeah. For the service, five star all the way, uh, no issues. But the whole experience? Yeah. Four star. How many people are going to run into that though? Well, I know at least two in Roan County. Yeah, around here. Already? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's and what's bad is, you know, Joe, you went the extra step and looked into it a little more, but there's so many people that would go to the website, put their stuff in, and then give up and say, well, I can't get it. Okay. Yeah, okay, at least three because I had to go. I had to do jump through, through, some, extra, through some extra hoops yeah. to get the service myself as well. So there's at least three cases in Roan County that you have to actually work some magic to make it happen. Right, right. So that's unacceptable and drops at a full star yes wow okay that's good you came on here and let people know that yeah though, that joe has there spoken. is a workaround so. <clears throat> yeah yes yeah. yeah, so for like in your case dave it's saying that you can't get it at your house you may you may be one of those to call and say yeah. hey so if i feel like waiting 40 minutes which i mean honestly waiting 40 minutes and seeing would save me because I, I think i pay like 80 bucks now for internet right would save me 30 bucks a month. Right. So is that worth a half hour phone call? Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. Why that's not? a dollar a day. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. You talk me into it, Joe. Well, I've been I'll telling... i calling somebody. Yeah, I've been telling a lot of people about this, that if you can get it... Yeah, get it? Yeah. If, if you're on Frontier, oh, gosh. look into this, because this is real internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. This is a game changer. Yes. I can't believe it's not five stars. If if they didn't have... Game changer, little, Joe. Yeah. Oh, Game Trust me, it pains me to give me that four stars, but for at least three cases that I know of, myself being one of them, have to do this, uh, what I call voodoo magic jump through the hoop. But isn't that kind of crazy, though, to think that yeah, a half-hour phone call makes you feel bad about it? Yeah, because when they tell you, go to our website. No, no, I'm just saying in general. Yeah. Look at, not the, not in a bad way towards you or anything else, but because I do the same thing. Like, if, if I go to a website and it's slow... I'm like, what? What the crap? Yeah. <laughs> Get your stuff together, man. This is ridiculous. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Or if I go to, like, uh, uh, we were we had a thing out the farm, you know, when our chicken doors go bad. Mm -hmm. So I tried to get on their website and order a new one, and it wouldn't work. And I was like, man. And it, I was tempted to switch brands, even though in the five years we've had chickens out there, never had a problem. Right. And the problem I have now may or may not be their problem, but I was just like, eh, we'll just order the part, and, you know. And, but... That's right. how spoiled we are. Well, well, and, it, and from my standpoint, it's not even the issue of the inconvenience of the phone call. Yeah. It's just because you, you have to. Well, it you advertise, use our website, use our website, use our yeah, website, and, and, use it. Yeah. and I have three in, at least three instances of. Right, right. Okay. I mean, I'm with you, and I yeah. understand. I'm just saying. If, okay, that, that, draw, that takes me off the trail to look how spoiled we are because we have so much stuff at our fingertips now. Right. Well, and I, I'm not even the, using the that as the excuse of if they would have said up front, okay, you need to call the sign up for right, service. Right. Guess what? I would have sat there and waited an entire day oh, yeah. and would have been a little aggravated, but I was like, okay, that's part of the Worth process it. I would have done. Worth I, it. Yeah. But when I know that like there's this hidden secret door that nobody knows about that it opens up this door of opportunity. I feel like we're circling have, back to five stars. What about you, Justin? I, I, have, I have issue with that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, he's worked up. He is worked yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> I had to call to get this fantastic service, and that's baloney. Well, because you say use your Start website. Start gone. Yeah, because you say use the website, and but then yeah. when the website says no, and then you have to go down this hidden route to get a yes. I feel I like we talk about this all the time. What meeting did someone sit in and say, listen, I just we just can't do the website thing. They'll just have to call and figure it out. Yeah. Brilliant. Exactly. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? I just, I, how's that happen? I mean, from and, my, a, and a company that big uh, with that many resources. Here's my thinking, and this is just me talking yeah. out of my head here. Yeah, I think it's, 
I don't want to say it's intentional because that kind of breeds dirty ground. Right. But that kind of helps slow the deploy deployment of. Really. Just well, think about it. Just in case, because what's worse? You're right. What's worse? Having some the internet or your page say yes, it'll work, and it not working, and having somebody be disgruntled. Or yeah, like have, or have like you overloaded. finding the Easter egg and being like, it works. Yeah. Yeah, getting your service <coughs> overloaded by yeah. new customers and everybody getting slow, junky yeah, internet, yeah. or I don't know, man. That goes so fast. I find it hard to believe. Well, I mean, I mean but you're right. You know more than I do. Yeah, everything so, yeah. has a capacity. I mean, the fire hose can only push out so much water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you have 30 garden hoses hooked up to it, yeah, you're going to be yeah, slow I to a trick. I still like this whole sitting in a meeting and, you know, you gave us this idea about a year ago. We're sitting in a meeting and who says this? And yeah. I mean, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> that, that applies to so many things anymore. Yeah. I can't get that image out of my head, bro. <laughs> Every time I see something that's just silly, I'm just like, somebody somewhere, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, let's run with this. I, I say the three of us, <laughs> so, so these big companies, yeah. you have three consultants sitting right here, and, and you don't have to fly us in, although it would be much more entertaining if you did. Yeah, oh, gosh. We're yeah. willing to sit in Zoom meetings <laughs> and go, okay, that's the dumbest idea, and here's 10 reasons don't why. Don't listen to Fred because yeah. <laughs> that's moronic, and it's going to cost you down the road. Because either we can save you this, this I mean, today, today, who, <laughs> who in their right mind today sit in that Apple meeting and said, you know what? I want to touch my dirty yeah. phone to your dirty phone yeah. because there's no reason why we shouldn't be touching dirty phones. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's some cat bag, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we can do this one of two ways. You can either pay us to do this kind of nonsense behind closed doors, or you can, we can have us do this on our podcast. Yeah, yeah. might do it in a public <laughs> forum. It's your choice. You know what it is. I attribute this that we come from fantastic Rome County. Where a lot of common sense and logic is used. Yes. I feel like Appalachia. You know, Appalachia people are just no nonsense, cut and dry. This is how it works in reality. Right. And that, that's our strong Here background. in the real world. Our heritage <laughs> says, you know what, uh, these cats out on the West Coast <laughs> <laughs> and wherever, you know. Yeah. Just knuckleheads. <laughs> but, you know, we, and, live, we live in a great little town where there's a, you know, stuff here works. And, and, I would and not people be are good. I would not be shocked that if. Apple comes out with some new technology because due to social distancing, yeah. it's not safe for you to be <laughs> bumping <Cat> phones. phones. <laughs> <laughs> now you need to buy an Apple cover. You have to beam the signal six feet away. <laughs> I, uh, what do you call it? Like some sort of uh, aesthetic oh, self-cleaning touch yeah. thing? Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> See, now somebody at hey. Apple's going, hey. These guys in Appalachia have an idea. Well, now they do. Brilliant. Have, they, they do have the Apple cloth, so maybe the Apple cloth no. fixes yeah. it. <laughs> I'm only going to touch phones if we can Apple cloth our phones. Yeah. So that we can then touch phones. So we can Apple cloth again. Yeah, All right. There's so many roads we can go down that. I'm oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, Joe, if anybody has any questions, needs any help, I mean, I know. We called you yesterday. He's like, Joe, got to have a laptop. Got to have it now. What do you got? And you had one on the shelf. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, Blur, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's how it went down. We were sitting in the office, and uh, Denise was like, hey, you need to call Joe. Justin, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had a own meeting. Uh, but uh, no, it worked out well. But if anybody needs to get a hold of you or Cena, how do they get a hold of you? You can give us a call at our office at 304-927-3588. Check out our website at amdigitaltechnologies.com. Or be sure to uh, subscribe to our podcast, Help Desk with Joe and Dave. We're on all the major platforms. And be sure to follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at A and Digital Tech for all that. And all of our episodes of our podcast are hosted by Anchor.fm. Brilliant. <laughs> How could it go wrong? Just call Joe or Cena. There now, you anyway, go. In all seriousness, you guys do a wonderful job. And that's what we had a mini crisis yesterday where we just we had to have a laptop you know with all this stuff going on we had an employee that we needed to have work from home right and uh we're like hey gosh we gotta do something and you save the day <laughs> half hour later like come get it all the stuff's loaded on you ready to go um so good stuff there our local businesses make sure you support them a m digital technologies powering all our patch stuff uh, even in emergency situations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. But yet we didn't have to bump phones to do it. <laughs> this is true. There, it was a no-contact deal. Yeah. <laughs> have them pull up. You'll be sitting on the porch. They can grab it and go, yeah. taken care of. And the beauty of it is I didn't even pay for it yet. Yeah. So, you know, even better. Yeah, there you go. No, nah, I'm joking. But A&M Digital Technology powering all the stuff here behind Patch. So if you have any technology stuff, please, please, please shop local. Support our local community here. We got a wonderful community. So from Spencer, West Virginia, Patch turned up studio here. Show ninety one. In the books. 
All right. Well, Joe, thanks for a good show, Justin. Uh, good luck on 92. Maybe it'll get better for you. I don't know. I don't know where we go from here, but good luck, buddy. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, anything else we need to follow in with? Uh, I think we're good. All right. Tune in next week. We'll have more technology helps, tips, and uh, good news, some bad news for our general users out there. And remember, uh, if you own Apple, good luck today. It was a rough day for you, yep. Justin. <laughs> uh, especially if you use Siri. My gosh. Watch out, but uh, follow Joe for more stuff. And uh, if you need anything, again, support those local businesses. Call Joe and Cena, A&M A &M Digital Technology. We will be back next week with more. I was going to say good stuff. We'll be back next week with stuff. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> Show 92. All right, in the books. Everybody have a great day. Have a great week. <laughs>